Hey everyone, it's Colt. I'm here to talk about Git and specifically the joys of squashing. If you're interested in learning more about Git, definitely check out my other videos uh, or my recently released Git course, which has nothing to do with me releasing a Git YouTube video. It's just a coincidence. Anyway, check it out. If you're curious, uh, there's a coupon below in the description. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how this course came out, really. I think it's my best course ever. I'm not just saying that. All right, so let's learn how to squash. Yes, this is funny. You can laugh. Also, this is squash. That's even funnier, and you should be laughing more. Anyway, what we're actually talking about uh, within Git is this idea of squashing commits together, combining multiple commits down into a single commit. So this is kind of a stylistic choice or a workflow decision. Uh, it's not something you ever have to do, but here's how it works. If you have typically a feature branch that you're working on, uh, it could be messy, it could have disastrously ugly commit messages and just way too many commits. If you want to combine them, you can. You could squash them down into a single commit that you could then merge into master or you could rebase on top of master. Um, there are different workflows that involve squashing, but the idea is taking multiple commits and combining them, boiling them down into a single commit. So why do this? Well, to keep your history tidier and easier to read, uh, you'll retain all the changes. You're not losing work, but you are losing commits, but deliberately. Uh, you'll get rid of messy feature branch commits and you won't muddy the, the mainline history as much, but it's just a personal choice or the company that you work for, the group that you're in, somebody makes a decision that we want you to squash before you merge changes. So you never need to do it, but here's an example. Uh, this is not an image I created. It's from a blog post on Carbon5 that shows a very messy Git history and compare that to this image here of a large repository that is using a squash and rebase based workflow where uh, branches, feature branches are squashed down to single commits and then rebased, a very obvious difference in readability and um, headache inducingness. Another reason you may want to squash is that uh, if, like me, you were told to commit early and often commit all the time, uh, you might end up with some really stupid commits or commits that you don't want to be part of the, the public record. You don't want to share with other people, not because they're like horribly embarrassing, but they're just frivolous or, uh, you know, small, really trivial things that could be combined or boiled down, squashed into other commits. So you might have history that looks like this, you know, fix some issue, work in progress, it's the weekend, I just got to make a commit now because it's the weekend, I'm not doing anything else, tweak something, fix a typo. Uh, there's so many of these little things that might come up, we could squash them down. The repo that I'll be using in this uh, short video is a GitHub repo I've made, it's nothing fancy at all. There's just two branches. Uh, there is the main branch, and then there is a about me branch. Uh, if you want, go ahead and clone it. The link is in the description. Uh, let me just run git clone with that URL, and then we'll check out this new folder. So there's two files in here, um, and if I do a git log on the main branch, we've got uh, some basic commits for different features, different sections of a website. So add the hero section, add a resume section, add a contact section. Um, and I'm just gonna open this up. Uh, what is it, index? So this is from a template. Uh, I did not make this myself. This is from a, a Bulma, a CSS framework, uh, one of the templates that I found on GitHub. Uh, so very nice. I didn't create that. I wanna be very clear about that. Anyway, so there's a new section I'm working on called About Me. So I have a spot for it, but there's nothing in there. So I have a branch where I've been working on it. Uh, and that branch currently is just a remote branch. If we do a dash A, there it is. It's on GitHub. I don't have it. But if I do a git switch and I just use that name, git will make me that branch locally and it's going to set it up to track the remote branch. And anyway, I now have that branch here. And if I do a git log one line, I added all of these commits on this about me branch. They all have to do with making the new about me section. So I started it, I added some new markup, I tweaked the padding and the fonts, then I made it responsive, then I updated the copy in the, the index.html file, I fixed a typo. Um, it's kind of, it's a little messy. It's, it's not great. If we take a look, it doesn't really matter, but there's that new section. Um, I wanna squash this all down. All of these commits right here, into a single new commit that I could then incorporate into main. Um, so to do that, we need to talk about interactive rebasing. 
So you don't have to be an expert on rebasing, uh, but there's this option we can pass into the git rebase command called dash i. Well, it's not called dash i, <laughs> the dash i option, uh, which tells git that we want to enter the interactive rebase mode, which allows us to do a whole bunch of things. We can squash commits, we can change commit message, uh, commit messages, we can add files or edit the contents of commits, we can drop commits. There's quite a few things we can do. But before we talk about that, we have to tell Git how far back we want to rebase. So in this example here, if I want to squash all of, all of these together, I need to tell Git I want to go back one, two, three, four, five, six commits, or I can just pick a commit hash like this. This is where we diverged. I could rebase back to this point. And you don't have to be an expert on rebasing. I'm gonna be very clear about that. Um, I do have that video on it if you wanna check it out. But if I just copy this commit hash, and then I run git rebase dash i, and I put that hash in, it's gonna open up my text editor. And in my editor, I'm going to see a list of the commits that I'm set to rebase. And then it's gonna say pick in front of each one. And I can change that command. There's a series of commands reword, edit, squash, that's the one we want, drop. And if I change those, and then I close out of the file, Git will go through this file, and for each one of these commits, it will run a particular command, whatever we specify. So I could say drop this commit, or edit this commit, or reword this commit, and Git will listen. It will do those, or execute those commands. So for us, we're focusing on squashing. So the way that this squash command works is that wherever we replace pick, with squash, all of those commits will be combined together. So all of these will be combined into the most recent commit that's not being squashed, which would be this one here. So they all get squashed up into this one, F7F, add new carousel feature. So once we save this file, we close it, Git will execute that, and then you'll see your editor opens back up and it has a new commit message that you can then go and edit. So let me demonstrate this. Um, I'm on the about me branch and I already copied this hash. I'm gonna go back right to here. So I wanna rebase all of this stuff, everything on the about me branch. So I'm gonna run git rebase dash i and paste that hash. And it opens up my editor and you can see that we have uh, all of those commits. So we're not rebasing the entire history, right? We specified a point we wanna go back to and they all say pick to start. Pick just means use this commit in the rebase but we don't want that. We wanna squash things. So uh, I'm gonna squash this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. I don't have to do that. I could just squash this one and it would be combined with the commit above it. Uh, or I could just squash these two and combine them with this one up here. It's up to me, but I'm gonna squash all of them except the first one. So I'm just gonna select them all and I can write squash or I can just type S. I like to do squash personally, just, I don't know, it's more explicit. Uh, and then I close the file. So I'm gonna X out of it. And then it opens up my editor again, because now there's a new commit message. The commit message it generates for me looks like this. It says, this is a combination of X, in my case, six commits. Here's the first one, the second one, the third, the fourth, the fifth. I can delete all of that. If I don't want that, I can get rid of it and replace it with my own message. Um, I'll just leave it there. Right, we still have a record of those commit messages. This is the last record of them because those commits are gone. The actual commit objects aren't part of the, the history anymore. Right, we just have one commit right here. And this commit contains all of the changes that we made that we squashed together. So if I just do a regular git log, you can see the long commit message. Uh, and it contains all that stuff, right? Nothing has changed if I refresh this page. We still have the whole feature here that used to be made up or it used to be uh, spread across six commits. Now it's just one commit. So at this point, I could merge that in, this new commit into master, I could rebase, um, I can do whatever I want, but the, the focus of this video is just on the actual squashing. Uh, so we accomplished that. That was one option for squashing commits. There is one other option, which is to use the dash dash squash option when we use git merge. Now this behaves a bit differently. Uh, you have less control in this scenario. So with this interactive rebase option, I could selectively squash you know, this one commit into the prior commit. Um, I don't have to squash everything on the branch. But if we use this option, 
will merge a feature branch typically into some other branch with dash dash squash. Uh, that tells Git to take all the changes, no matter how many commits, just all the changes from the feature branch, apply them to the current branch, and then it's up to us to actually commit that. We have to make the new commit. So I'm gonna undo what I just did uh, on the, the branch here uh, using a, a ref log reference. It's something I cover in the Git course as well. I'll probably make a video on it one day. Um, anyway, if I do a git log, I've now undone uh, the squash that I had. And now what I'm gonna do is just demonstrate this other way of squashing changes. I'm gonna switch to my main branch. All right, and uh, I'm going to now merge using this squash option, the about me branch. So normally, if I just did a git merge about me, I'm gonna have all of those commits whatever number will be in my history, six commits or so from this branch. Uh, but now I don't have a new commit just yet. If I do a git log, I don't have a new commit. The last one is still add footer, which is what it was before. But if I type git status, I have changes uh, that are currently that, that get made for me that I have to commit myself. And if I take a look at them, I'll just do git diff head. We can see uh, this is all the stuff coming from that branch. So all this work is here. All of those commits, all the changes from those commits was added over to my main branch. And now I have to make the commit myself. Uh, so they're already staged. And I'll just do something like, um, you know, add about me section. And now if I do a git log, I'll just do one line. I have a single new commit add about me section on the main branch, and it contains the six or so commits from the about me branch smushed together. So all that work is here. If I refresh the page, here's the about me section, totally functional, all the work is still there. But now we just have one commit. So this is just a choice that you can make. If you want to squash things, you can. I'm not saying you need to all the time. Uh, some people are not a fan because you do lose uh, history, right? You're rewriting history, you're combining things together. But on the other hand, you do end up with a much cleaner history. Uh, this is what we see right now on the main branch. If I had not squashed, this is what we would have seen on the main branch. All these additional tiny commits, they add up to be a feature, but on their own, they're kind of, some of them at least, are silly. So we saw two ways of squashing. One uh, that we just saw is to use the squash option with merge, and the other is to use interactive rebase, which gives us finer control over what we are squashing. We don't have to do all commits like I did here. You could single one out and squash it into its neighboring commit. Either way, the idea is to clean up your history, to squash commits together. So I hope you enjoyed that, or at least found it informative. If you wanna learn more about Git, check out my other Git videos or my recently released Git course uh, that goes into a ton more detail, lots of fancy diagrams, pretty happy with how it turned out. You can find a coupon in the description. All right, goodbye everyone.